the different changes uh, of the architecture level, the basic architecture change that has gone uh, in SAP HANA as a database. Uh, so I will uh, take you across uh, on an overview level uh, as a functional consultant, what we need to know. Only those things would be um, seen here and uh, we will check um, all the different uh, available uh, data on the HANA database as such. And then uh, we will jump on to uh, the introduction to S4 HANA logistics, uh, which will uh, basically cover all the different uh, topics in the logistics area where uh, the changes has come in uh, as part of uh, S4 HANA system. Um, then we have uh, the various uh, deployment options or various um, phases. Um, uh, so our various software that has been given as part of S4. So we will just deep dive into that and we will discuss more on what are the different deployment options, what are the different uh, um, systems available for uh, um, for the customers to use like on-premise cloud or hybrid. And then, uh, then we have a, a methodology called as SAP Activate methodology which we will also see um, which is used for basically implementing or uh, implementing the um, S4 HANA system um, at your customer place. So um, then uh, we will see more detail about business partner uh, on SAP S4 HANA um, which is basically the uh, CVI integration, the customer vendor integration. Uh, where we have, uh, so this is where the practical starts. So we have uh, certain things to be configured in the system. I will show you uh, what all things to be configured in order to do the customer vendor integration here as well. And uh, after that, then we move on to uh, different objects uh, within the um, sales, uh, like um, what are the different apps being used? Uh, what are the different changes that has come uh, at the database level or at the technical level, like changes in pricing, condition technique, the availability check changes. Um, those these changes will be then I will cover it under the sales on SAP S4 HANA topic. Then we will see uh, the output management uh, topic where uh, uh, the new output process of using the BRF plus. Uh, and uh, how do we configure the form template? What is master form template? So these topics will be covered under output management. Uh, for MRP, uh, then we have a separate session on MRP itself. So we have the new MRP live uh, as part of S4 HANA. Um, I will show you in the system how uh, we configure the uh, or how we execute the MRP uh, run in S4 HANA system using the new transaction and what are the changes that it has brought in into S4 HANA system. Um, similar to that, we will see uh, the different architectural changes uh, that has come in uh, different processes like sourcing, procurement, supply chain, manufacturing and sales. Along with that, um, we will see how uh, Activate methodology is used for data migration, the guided configuration uh, part, the material maintenance planner, ATC, how does it help uh, in S4 HANA conversion, then how do we adapt the custom code that we have written into S4? So these are the topics, um, and uh, then we will see a more detailed configuration about credit management. We will try to configure the credit management, and then uh, and uh, we will see some topics on uh, migration of material ledger, um, and how do we modify the business partner field. Or adding a custom field in the business partner transaction so that uh, also will be covered. So these are just a glimpse of topics that uh, we will be covering across uh, the 30 hour session that has been planned and at the end of the session uh, you can basically try to implement uh, the S4 uh, system within uh, with the new uh, objects. Yeah, um, so yeah, so you can try configuring all these um, um, in, in your system and uh, you can try to execute and 
I'll be able to support you during your configuration as well. So this is what it is planned. So if you have any questions, uh, you can ask me now. Avinash, a quick thing. Uh, I I see that we have quite a few things on the sales side, like credit management and other stuff. Yeah. What do we do on the procurement side? Um, are you expecting any specific topic on the procurement side? For example, if uh, we talk about the purchase orders or GRs or maybe, you know, requisitions or just quotations, will they be covered somewhere here or how is it? No, I, see, um, as part of procure to pay, I will be demoing you the procure to pay um, scenario completely. So okay. as part of the uh, S4HANA, wherever the changes are there, I will actually point out those changes. But if there are no changes uh, in any of these processes, then it is going to be same as how it was in ECC. So, uh, but basically, I will show you all the required apps that is required uh, during the process of procure to pay or order to cash scenarios. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Now, Vinash, Rajiv here. When you talk about conversion, so I assume we are talking about conversion from ECC to S4 HANA. Is it correct? That's correct. That's correct. So there are five steps that you need to perform. But uh, for this conversion, I'll not be able to show a demo or uh, a system because uh, I don't have any access to system where I can show a conversion in real time. But whereas I will just uh, show it theoretically, uh, what are the steps that you need, uh, what are the major issues that you could face, and uh, what is the thing that you can basically do to overcome uh, these errors or issues. Uh, but if you face any issues during your process, you can uh, always uh, let me know where I will be able to help you during that as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we know sure this is great. Here. So, we'll be showing the recordings in the world. Uh, yes, at the end of each session, uh, IntelliPart would uh, send you uh, or upload the recordings in your corresponding portal and you'll be able to access them. Okay, thank you. Along with that, I will also send all the uh, PPTs that uh, we will discuss or any documents that I would uh, need for configuring. So I've prepared a lot of documents, which is for configuration. And I will share those documents as well uh, um, after the end of each session, uh, which you can use uh, for your configuration as well. So uh, SAP HANA actually is a database um, that is invented or uh, created by SAP, them, SAP themselves. It is also called as uh, uh, in-memory database. SAP is an in-memory database. Uh, so if I say in-memory, then that means um, all the uh, data that is required for processing uh, within the SAP HANA will stored in memory or the RAM, the random access memory. Uh, so that is why it is called as in-memory database. So there is no concept of hard disk or ROM here. Uh, instead, all the data that is being in process will be directly available on RAM because accessing a data from a RAM is more faster when compared to accessing a data from a ROM. Uh, so that is the concept where SAP wants to um, bring upon uh, in the database itself. Uh, so uh, the SAP HANA is not only a software, it is basically a combination of hardware and a software. Right? Hardware in the sense, so we have uh, um, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, multi-core servers or multi-core CPUs along with huge, uh, huge memory of RAM required. Then um, again, the memory of hard disk or secondary memory. Um, <coughs> along with that, uh, we need to have uh, um, other uh, servers which is required for um, SAP HANA. So on top of all these hardware, we have a software uh, being added, uh, which, which basically uh, processes massive real-time data uh, using the in-memory computing. The concept of in-memory here is, uh, as I said, all the data that are required for processing will be directly available for you in the RAM. So RAM is a volatile temporary memory, which is there in all the laptop systems. Uh, um, so basically the data that is currently in use will be saved in the RAM 
and which is not used, uh, which is less frequently used, will be saved in ROM or the hard disk. So likewise, uh, the database itself is now created using the RAM as a memory, where the whole database itself will lie in the uh, RAM, and the data which is not currently used, uh, which is not used many times, will be available in the uh, ROM or the uh, database. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, if I uh, try to compare HANA as a database with uh, the relational database like Oracle or uh, MaxDB or SQL, then uh, uh, basically what happens is uh, in a normal uh, relational database, the data will be stored in a row wise, uh, row based uh, data. Uh, like, uh, for example, uh, uh, the data um, um, that is uh, being saved into the database, uh, if there's a table of data like uh, one row which contains the name of the country, the name of the person, his sales, so this is one row of data. Uh, so if such a row is being pushed into the database, then uh, we have uh, the data being saved row-wise. But whereas, but whereas uh, in the column based, uh, um, it will store according to the columns that is used. Uh, Avinash, so how about the retrieval? Uh, yeah, I will just tell you. Just give me a second. Hello. Hello. Apologies. Uh, yeah. Um, yes. So the question was, how do you retrieve the data? Um, see, the RAM here will will access or, or will uh, will basically uh, work as it as if it is uh, the database itself uh, or the uh, uh, the normal database itself. So um, it is only that that it is saved real time and. Uh, uh, 
um, the process the process uh, is the same however it is going to retrieve the data from the normal database the same way all the data will be retrieved from the ram as well um, so there is no change in the way the data is being retrieved so i didn't get the i think what you used in relational database we use rows and in in memory we use columns so let me just show you a diagram okay for example now uh, this is the way in which you want to save a data into a database uh, right um, say if, if the table contains a country a product and sales mm -hmm. and uh, this is how you're going to insert the data into database in a traditional database in a, um, a relational database uh, um, so whenever when you send a row into the database that is how it will be read so here you can see in the, uh, the current uh, country column, the product and the sales, one by one will be inserted into the database and this is how it will be saved. But whereas uh, with SAP HANA as a database, what happens is it will read column wise. First it will read the column one, it will insert the data. Then it will read the column two, it will insert the data. It will read the column three, then it insert the data. So mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, the mapping uh, against uh, these columns would be maintained in a separate uh, table, and uh, um, and that that's how it will be accessed. So so basically, the performance-wise, it is more performant, and uh, it also increases uh, the 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 or the time taken to retrieve the data if it's column-based is more uh, quicker when compared to the normal uh, row-based data. Okay, but uh, we we still have the concept of primary key and data fields. In, yes, uh, all those things are still there. So, um, um, so there's no change in that as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Avinash. So my question was: in column store, how does uh, the new record get inserted, or how do you even fetch the existing record? So, what's the mechanism to use that? Um. Yeah. See, the mechanism from an SAP side is uh, is going to be same. Uh, there's no change in the way. So we are going to still use a select statement to retrieve the data. Um, but whereas the way that particular query reads the data is, is different now. For example, now if I do a select star uh, and uh, on a particular table, what happens is uh, if it identifies a, a particular valid value from a table, it will read the whole row break it from the database into the application layer but whereas um, in a column based uh, storage uh, i cannot use a select star so i'll have to use a select followed by the list of columns right so in that case what happens if it identifies a valid row then only the columns that has been specified here will be retrieved uh, from the relevant uh, database table right so uh, the only thing that uh, you uh, that it does the architectural way is that um, it it saves the data in a different manner. So um, uh, the column wise, it will read the data in the column wise and save it in column wise, and it will have a mapping uh, for that particular column uh, to uh, so whenever there's a compression happening on the data, then uh, the data with the same uh, um, say fields or same value will be compressed and you'll you'll have separate mapping to that particular data so uh, so actually when you try to read as so in the mapping uh, table would be read and from that mapping table it will identify the exact uh, record or rec uh, read and then uh, the corresponding data would be read from the database table okay uh, from from a um, normal user perspective or consultant perspective uh, uh, there is no much difference that you can see um, as an architecture way but uh, performance way you, you can find a difference in the way it accesses the data and from an ABAP developer perspective uh, the way you're going to do uh, create a query uh, or do a selection then that that will change when we use a column based uh, storage mm -hmm. Okay, so so it that doesn't mean that uh, it will uh, complete the SAP HANA completely removes the uh, row based uh, data, but uh, um, it, it it uses both the row based and the column based as well. So wherever is required, 
uh, to use a row base then it uses a row base wherever is required to use a column base then it uses a column based way of storing the data okay so both the uh, possibilities are available now with sap hana as a database mm -hmm. okay yeah and uh, Abhinash, so, yes uh, avinash as you said that in row based uh, uh, did, uh, in previous version of sap when it was row based we used to have title like in in the example which you show uh, mm -hmm. as in india as uh, it falls in the country right in yes. row based uh, database so in column based database how, how is the system going to identify that this particular field is country and the other particular field let's say is, it is a product right uh, like chocolate so how is it uh, going okay. to identify so this? Uh, i said so, so basically it will have a mapping table also defined not only okay. this table will basically identify the record but instead uh, it will have a mapping table which actually uh, defines the mapping with actual data and uh, the actual uh, data that is stored in the database so okay. there will be a mapping table which identifies okay this is my first column and this is my second column and uh, and then accordingly it brings in the data so if somebody would have worked on the bw system then we have where, where we have this uh, sids in place uh, in the star schema uh, where uh, in order to fetch a particular data you need to basically uh, traverse to the schema to fetch the data similarly there's a schema that is also defined here in the HANA database using which uh, the corresponding data would be fetched and uh, displayed. Okay. Yeah, so um, HANA as a database now will have, uh, the data will now reside in the main memory and uh, no longer on a hard disk. So always uh, all the required data will be now on a volatile memory so there are certain mechanisms that has been implemented uh, by sap to save this volatile memory at certain uh, intervals of time or certain variations at an event so that when there's a system failure uh, there is no loss of data that will happen and the corresponding data would be brought in back from the um, uh, at the place where the data has been committed Um, why was this performed is uh, basically um, if I uh, go back a little um, say uh, historic uh, evolution of SAP on the S4 HANA side um, or HANA side uh, basically HANA as a database was uh, created for BW system so that was the first uh, invention that uh, SAP wanted to do for um, SAP system um, so during that time uh, the bw system was basically used only for analytic purposes right so any analytics that you would want to show then we used to use the bw system to show that and uh, but the time taken for a particular query or particular uh, process in in bringing up an analytics was longer why because the time taken for the system to retrieve data from the database was taking longer mm -hmm. so in order to uh, basically reduce that particular time or, or make it more performant uh, or to perform real-time analytics uh, they invented this new database called HANA and uh, it, it, it basically um, uh, was invented for creating analytics so so that means the S4 HANA that we are going to learn is also mostly concentrated on the analytical side as well. Now, there is also a, a small uh, point here that I would want to make. Since analytical, analytical plays a major role here, so that means column-based data will be more effective, or uh, analytics, analytics will be more effective when we use column-based data or if there is any transaction relevant data that you would want to see then the row based data would be the best way to save the uh, data into the database right so so that brings to a point that any olap applications online analytical processing applications will use column based storage or any oltp based application online uh, 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 transaction processing applications will will have the row based as the uh, way of storing the database 
okay oh. and uh, yeah uh, multi core uh, so basically hana is uh, based on the multi core architecture in a distributed system environment so it is it is not only a single core or a dual core or a quadra core so the cores on which the server runs is uh, very huge um, and uh, and also the size of the ram so 100 tb 200 tb is what uh, the sizing uh, recommends when we go for uh, a sizing of s4 hana or hana as a database uh, <clears throat> so with such huge rams and uh, so many cores uh, it makes it possible that uh, hana works uh, more faster uh, when when there is a data being retrieved um so hana as a database was written in c++ uh, as a language and it supports only on the operating system so say linux enterprise server 11 sp 102 so this is uh, the server uh, on which the hana will be installed okay any questions on this uh yeah so hana if i say hana has a database oh, so before that hana means hana stands for high performance analytics h a n a uh, so high performance analytics uh, is is the abbreviation uh, uh, that stands for h uh, a n a as such so um, if i say hana as a database then that means all the read and write operations uh, will happen directly on the ram or uh, the live memory or the active memory or is also called as in memory so uh, usually in a any database on a normal any system that you say uh, if i have a word document being typed in and if i want to save uh, it will try to save the data into the hard disk it will not save into the ram the saving of data into the ram will happen automatically so that is where this temporary for example if i am currently working on something and my system crashes when i open the word again it will uh, give me an option or say that uh, that it didn't close properly so um, um so you want to so there's a temporary file stored do you want to retrieve it kind of options you will get so basically that is what uh, it is being retrieved from uh, ram similar to that uh, hana as a database will not store the data in the database in the hard disk instead it will store the data in the ram itself as a temporary file right so so uh, why it is storing as a temporary file uh, because uh, the time taken to access a file on the ram is more faster when you try to access the same file from the hard disk right um so uh, so they have rewritten the hana itself completely to basically do this operations of uh, saving uh, all the data in the ram itself and uh, similarly using column store uh, it enables massive data compression as i said uh, um, the uh, identical values or identical columns would be um, mapped to do a single uh, ids or uh, sids or uh, mids um using that uh, massive data compression is possible and uh, it also acts as a secondary indexer so there is no need of creating indexes in the hana database instead automatically the database itself um, will act as uh, the secondary indexes in uh, retrieving the data Uh, similarly uh, it also processes uh, it also uses massive parallel processing across various cpus and um, and for projections uh, whenever we do a query whenever we write a select statement we say only to bring only this list of columns that you need uh, to be uh, retrieved or populated on the screen so uh, when you do a projection then only the certain columns that you need uh, will be projected and not everything would be read read from the database similarly for dynamic aggregation uh, hana is uh, basically good for doing aggregation uh, on the fly aggregation um, so that is one of the aspect uh, of s4 hana as well 
based on this concept of hana they have deprecated many of the aggregation tables or index tables from s4 hana system um, so basically this is the uh, the dynamic aggregation would basically help hana to do the totaling uh, or calculation directly during the runtime instead of bringing the data to application server say uh, in a normal uh, relational database if i want to do a totaling of certain uh, columns what we do is uh, we bring in the data uh, to the application server we perform the calculation and then we show the output but whereas with hana as a database we don't bring the data into the data application server and then perform calculation instead we directly perform the calculation or perform the total on the database itself and then bring only the output so that is what uh, the difference that the dynamic aggregation gives uh, with hana as a database and similarly the um, storage also is defined um, uh, in two different types one is the active the other one is the passive um, so active storage is is a storage uh, that is directly on the ram uh, uh, the currently used data will be stored on the active memory and uh, the data which is not used uh, so frequently or which is accessed uh, less frequently will now reside on the passive storage uh, itself so this active and passive is also um, Uh, renamed as hot and cold storage so the active relates to a hot storage and passive relates to the cold storage uh, i mean as uh, yes yeah. um, so when you say active and passive storage we still have ram and uh, database right which is that's active. correct okay. yes and uh, uh, so where when is this active and passive storage is this like ram and then uh, hard disk or Yeah, it's RAM and hard disk. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So whenever a particular data is not being accessed, it will free that memory from RAM and it will store it in the database or hard disk. Yeah. When does the sync happen? Uh, based on certain events, uh, like if there's a commit that's happening or if there's a uh, so there are different servers within Hana database which takes care of doing the sync. So commit is one of the uh, event based on which this will happen or. Uh, if there is any uh, event which is being triggered from a query or uh, which is being processed uh, by the engines, then it will uh, do this uh, sync happening with the hard disk. Okay. Yeah. So we also have this persistency layer uh, or the persistence server as such, which takes care of doing the syncing as well. So, so that persistence layer or persistence server takes care of uh, syncing the data between the RAM and the hard disk. Right. Uh, so uh, real-time analysis also is possible with uh, SAP HANA. Um, so earlier in the bw system uh, what was that happened was uh, so whenever a data was created in a erp system and that data needs to be replicated into the bw system and then once the replication is completed then we do uh, the analysis on that or analytics would be created on that particular data but whereas uh, with sap hana as a database the real time replication is possible so that means as soon as some transaction happens on uh, the sales side or the uh, purchase side and then the corresponding data will be directly available for the analysis or analytics you don't need to wait for uh, a replication happen between the databases or uh, so hana has a capability of real time replication uh, so as soon as the data gets created it gets uh, uh, Were replicated directly into the HANA database as well. And uh, uh, yes. one question here: So, who decides, you know, what uh, data will be an active data and uh, what data will be a passive data? For example, uh, in most of the business scenarios, let's say a data which is uh, just two years old and current data, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, is an active data, and whatever is before that is passive. Can or uh, is this option available there in the system yes. whatever is that uh, during the sizing itself so this option will be available 
okay. uh, whenever the uh, hardware sizing is being uh, maintained according to the customer's uh, requirement uh, so if they say that i want to have two years of data directly available on ram then yes according to that the ram would be sized and provided anything later than two years uh, then would be uh, archived or put into the uh, passive storage um, okay. yes uh, so that is that will be handled at the sizing level itself okay so that was my question you know this is how you know the active and the passive database is defined right yes yes that's correct okay okay and so in case if i want to retrieve data which is 5 years old current and 5 year old five in the past so it will also access both the hana database and the uh, the active database and the passive database both and then it will sync and get it, uh, get the uh, final data that's, final dump to me is it that's correct yes okay so in that case how is the performance in, in uh, improving is will there be an improve in the performance or it, is it is it going to work the same way as it is working in the erp system um no that's all so whenever there is access to the active data then the performance would be better but when mm -hmm. there is again access to the uh, passive storage mm -hmm. then yes there will be certain reduction in uh, the performance as such that is why uh, during the exercise of hardware sizing uh, so this this comes into play so when there is a frequent access of old data then it is wise to size it accordingly and have the data available on the ram uh, instead of putting it in the passive um, so yes uh, for the performance consideration but it is not uh, it will not be as uh, bad as erp as such but uh, it will be more quicker um, uh, uh, on the hana side because uh, we can write mm -hmm. these kind of complex queries directly on the database you don't right. need to write it on the application server and then execute it on the database instead you can directly write it on the database and execute it at the database itself so mm -hmm. yeah we have to write the sql script on the database hana database where these kind of complex calculations is required and and the database takes care of retrieving it and pushing it to the application server Okay. Right. So uh, another concept of uh, in-memory computing is that uh, um, so basically they would want to uh, delegate on the data intense operations into in-memory. So um, if I say data intense operation means where uh, a particular operation needs a lot of data that needs to be processed. Um, so uh, and those kind of uh, scenarios um, instead of doing it on the application layer it would be done on the uh, database layer um, so it is also called as code to uh, win a code push down approach where um, the code uh, that actually was written on the application layer is now being pushed to the data layer where you write the retrieval logic code at the database itself to do all the complex calculation and bring only the required output to the um, UI. Okay. Um, so, what are the advantages that we get uh, when we do all these processes or when we use SAP HANA as a database? Is um, we get the most fastest data retrieval speeds uh, because of the in-memory processing and uh, since we use the column based storages it, it, it provides data compression up to 11 times um, and also reducing the storage space of huge data as well um, yeah the speed also uh, offered by ram is further enhanced by use of multiple cpus or multiple cpus per node uh, in a distributed environment so uh, in addition to all these uh, uh, hardware related uh, enhancements increases the speed in which the data is being retrieved as well. Okay. So, this is the a simple HANA architecture. It is not uh, the architecture provided by SAP, it is uh, the architecture that uh, that will explain you in, in um, um, say, uh, provide you. Uh, a good idea on what exactly each thing does on HANA database. So this is a database. Please be aware, this is a HANA database and not an S4 HANA. It's HANA is a database with an S4 HANA system. So we are seeing what actually happens in HANA database. So as you can see, there are 
um, four main server one is the index server then we have the pre-processed server statistic server and name server so these four servers are the main servers which lies as part of uh, the hana database other than that uh, along with these servers we have uh, the application uh, or the web server on top uh, so basically this is the mini development environment or uh, um, uh, a ui uh, which is provided at the database itself uh, which which can be used for programming uh, on the database um, right so um, so hana also has its own hana client library based on which you can write queries complex queries create views within the hana database and provide an output if I say UI, so that means any UI can be connected using a, a web service call or uh, the connection that SAP HANA can make. Uh, the UI can be like a, a normal SAP Fiori UI or uh, uh, you can also connect to SAP Lumira. You can connect to Excel as such directly uh, to get the output from HANA database also. So this is a development environment provided by uh, SAP um, HANA as a database so so this this part is the UI part now we have the actual server uh, so here uh, the index server is the most important server of the HANA database component um, it also contains the, the index server is is the server which contains the actual data uh, that is stored and uh, the engines that is there in the uh, index server actual processes the data um, so the index server uh, processes the uh, see the SQL MDX processor basically processes the incoming SQL query or incoming MDX query and uh, based on the query it it also executes that query uh, in the SQL engine um, to then provides the data back into the um, into the UI where it needs to be provided. So the major junk of work happens uh, at the index server. And then we have the persistence layer in the index server. So this persistence layer is, is basically the layer which responsible for um, the uh, durability and the atomicity of the transactions. Right. So uh, whenever uh, there is a, um, a commit happens or whenever there's an event that says so this layer takes care of uh, basically uh, saving the data into the hard disk uh, and retrieving it back into the ram so that is actually done by this persistence layer right so so but again uh, at what stages this does uh, so there are certain events that be triggered uh, within the server itself uh, or certain, between certain intervals of time um, based on which the data from the RAM would be replicated onto the hard disk uh, for storage. So if there's any power failure or if there's any system restarted, the current uh, RAM data that has been refreshed or put into the hard disk would be brought back by the persistence layer to be processed. Uh, then we have the pre-processor server, uh, which basically is used for processing the text level data. So if there are any text data that needs to be processed uh, uh, within the HANA system on a database, then you use this pre-process server to process the text. Um, so for analyzing the extracting the text data, for analyzing the text data, uh, or uh, for doing the fuzzy text search, so these kind of searches will happen on the pre-process server. The name server is the server that actually contains information about what object is lying where. Uh, so it knows exactly um, uh, which component on this particular server or index server uh, or the SAP server itself uh, uh, or what data is located at which uh, server will, will actually be known by this name server. So this is the one which contains information about that. Uh, statistics server is a server which collects information about how the system performs, how the resource is being consumed, um, or how the other servers are performing. So all these data will be collected by statistics server, and it also has a history uh, maintained uh, uh, in, in itself, uh, which contains uh, the measurement data, and it can be used for further analysis as well. Um, 
so um, and yeah i missed the session and transaction manager basically uh, it, it coordinates uh, the database transactions and and uh, and then keeps tracks of uh, what are the transaction which is currently running now or which has been closed so that coordination happens at the session and transaction manager so this is how a hana database is structured and uh, kept and uh, accordingly um, the data would be processed within the uh, database like this uh avinash yeah uh, can you uh, repeat on this uh, pre processor server please because i missed out on that okay pre processor server uh, is basically for analyzing the text level data so for example if you want to analyze a text i want to upload a excel file or a text file and analyze the text or i want to do a fuzzy text search right so uh, in hana uh, with hana database it, it comes with a inbuilt text search capability right so if i want to do some text level searches then this is the server that does that search so uh, if there is any text data that you want to analyze or extract information on the text data then uh, the pre process server is what is responsible of doing it okay got it thanks will will that help the um, customer master duplication or something of that sort in the pre processors no to remove no. them no because you said it can be utilized for uploading right um, so this is at the database level this oh, is at the hana level. database level um so uh, you don't try to please relate it with s4 hana concepts uh, but this is at the hana as a database level if there are any searches that you want to do uh, at the hana database for searching text then uh, you use the pre the pre processor server does that to do it got it within within the server of hana you think it will yes. help in searching that's, the text level data okay that's Sorry. correct yeah Thank you. Yeah, uh, Avinash, where does the RAM come into picture here? Um, see, the whole uh, the index server basically, um, or uh, as such, this whole HANA database itself uh, will reside both on uh, RAM as well as ROM. But the data currently, which is processed within the index server, is being processed in the RAM, and the persistence layer is the layer that actually saves or replicates the data which is not used on the ram into the uh, hard disk okay and how about the unstructured uh, data so unstructured data how is it stored and retrieved um so well, i mean server saves it what kind of unstructured data that you are uh, looking at like uh Uh, image files like jpeg files and kind of attachments binary files um okay so uh, see when when we try to uh, upload a jpeg file or image file um into hana database um I'll have to check that. Uh, that was a good question. I never came across this kind of uh, situation where I need to upload the uh, unstructured data into database. I will check that and I'll get back to you. Okay. Sure, Avinash. Yeah. Sure. Any other questions? Right. Um. Yeah. So. Um. as i said the uh, hana system supports uh, both uh, row store and column store um, um, but uh, when we need to use uh, a row store or column store uh, we have to define based on the whole app or oltp processing um, as as in the row storage uh, it basically stores the records uh, as a sequence of rows uh, whereas in column storage it stores the data as a sequence of columns uh, in a continuous memory locations um, yeah so this is the same diagram that i showed you and what the advantages of uh, column based tables is basically uh, uh faster data access is the first advantage uh, how uh, this is used is because uh, when we use a column based storage only the relevant columns that is required for retrieval would be 
used for selection and uh, the query will select only that column and um, and similarly on HANA database any column can serve as an index so um, uh, not like unlike to uh, uh, the server uh, sorry the relational database uh, where if I want to create an index then I'll have to select the columns which I want to select as secondary index and use it but in S4 HANA uh, sorry in HANA as a database any columns can serve as an index column um, and uh, since using the column based uh, tables uh, so we have a better compression uh, which allows highly efficient compression and uh, and um, yeah, so basically since it's efficient compression only uh, uh, distinct values will be stored at the column wise and uh, any repeated values will be stored uh, based on certain uh, key uh, IDs uh, between the values and uh, in a column store uh, since the data is vertically partitioned um, parallel processing uh, can happen more uh, easily and uh, multiple column um, can be searched or aggregated uh, um, uh, to basically provide uh, a better uh, processing speeds and uh, processing techniques in a column based storage. Um, what are the disadvantages and advantages of a row based uh, is basically uh, if an application has uh, only a single record to be processed at any point of time, then it is good to go with a row based um, because um, um, and, and if only there are say, a less number of columns then um, it is wise to go with a row based tables and uh, for example uh, if an application needs to read all the rows of a particular table then then also then it is required or it is wise to select a column based instead of a size why to select the row based instead of a column based because by default uh, the selection will happen uh, for all the columns in a particular row um, so uh, it'll be more faster or quicker if we use a row based in those kind of situation and if a particular table does not have any aggregations or uh, no fast searching is required then uh, then you can use a row based storage uh, to save the data. Uh, similarly, if the table has uh, less number of rows, a small number of rows, like configuration tables or system tables, then you can still go ahead with a row based storage instead of a column based. So, when is that uh, the row based will be a disadvantage? Is uh, in case of uh, the analytical application where aggregations are being uh, used and fast search. Is required so when these kind of processing is uh, performed then uh, the row based storage will not uh, be a performant uh, way of storing the data so there it is uh, our recipe recommends to uh, use a column based when there is any analytical application so in short um, the column storage is useful when we you go for OLAP queries uh, row storage will useful will be useful if we use relational OLTP queries. Um, so OLAP stands for online analytical processing, and uh, OLAP OLTP stands for online uh, transactional processing. Uh, yeah. Um, so as I said, the HANA uh, database also has uh, certain modeling uh, options available directly on the database itself or it also provides a UI uh, which can be used for uh, doing uh, creating models um, so uh, so basically the views uh, so HANA tables can be uh, modeled in, in, in three different views called as calculation view analytical view and attribute view and these uh, views can be accessed directly by other applications like HTML applications or SAP applications or any other third party tools like Excel also. Um, so these views are basically uh, the way in which you are going to show a particular data from a database to the um, external user. So that is what is defined in this view. Um, 
so attribute views uh, are basically uh, is equal to the dimensions or bw characteristics of master data and uh, they are used to join uh, to a dimension on attribute view so uh, for example if if there is there is only some uh, transactional data that you want to process and you want to display uh, the uh, the data from uh, the hana database uh, into another uh, application then you use the attribute view to just show the data but uh, if you want to show some analytics some graphs some charts uh, that needs to be populated on the hana database then the analytical view will be the view that can be used to project that data from the database into the um, uh, uh, say the output um, so analytical views are star schemas or fact tables surrounded by dimensions uh, uh, so where the calculations or restrictive measures are also used um, so the calculation view is a is a composite view which is on top of analytical and attribute views uh, in order to perform complex calculations um, then uh, you use the calculation view to do this um, calculation views are basically combination of tables a combination of attribute views and analytical views which is used for delivering complex business requirements so it is just for your information that we need to know that these are the three views that is there in the database uh, using which the data is being projected to uh, the outside world on the database tables. Um, so these three views are basically processed by different engines within the uh, model itself. Uh, the analytical view will be processed under OLAP engine. Uh, the attribute view will, will be processed in a join engine and, and the calculation view will be processed in the calculation engine. So if my output needs to have some uh, analytics to be performed, then uh, either we use a calculation engine or all opinion to perform that uh, calculations. If it needs a normal uh, view where a graph is not required, then attribute view or attribute join engine will be the one which does the uh, calculations for us and gives an output. Right, so um, I would just log into the system and show you how a column based or row based uh, is now being handled in S4 HANA system. Um, I have a yes. question. So yeah. you're talking about the advantages and uh, disadvantages of the column store, right? So yes, uh, the advantages, uh, you, I mean, disadvantage you said it is uh, it is best used in analytics, not for the regular thing. So yes. then, uh, let's say like a same table, I want to use it for uh, uh, single select and also for the analytic purpose. Okay, so how does the system, uh, or how do I first save it and how do I uh, make the system work in a better way for both the scenarios at once? Um, see, by default, SAP offers uh, you to use the table in a column store. Okay, so that is the by default setting that SAP gives. If you okay. create any table in S4 on our system, if you see on the database, it will try to create that particular database as a column store. So, at certain cases, if you feel that particular column store is not going to work, uh, or if you say that, uh, say, I'm not going to have a lot of data in my table, I'm going to have only one data, one line of data, which is just needs to have configuration uh, related data or the system uh, related data then you have the option to basically change it into row based. But if you say that you want to do a select a single uh, column and uh, also you want to do perform analytics, then you can, you will have to go for column based where, um, see even the column based, it will work. It is not that uh, um, you cannot have a transactional processing data in a column based storage. It is that if you uh, feel that uh, right every time uh, I need to query that particular column with a list of column names. And if you feel the performance uh, is, uh, is, or if you're not going to use an analytics on top of that data itself, then uh, you can go for row based. But if you say that you want to go for analytics, then obviously then column based would be the efficient way of storing the data. Okay. 
Now, where is that option provided for us in uh, Esperana system? Um, so under uh, technical settings, so we have the new tab called DB specific properties where you can actually change uh, what the different type of storage that you can uh, create on the HANA database. So this will decide what kind of store will be used during the creation of HANA database. So initially I, I sort of make it as a row and uh, later I, I see that it's mostly used for analytics then how do I make that work? You can change. If I go on to change one, you can actually shift between row and column store. So accordingly the database will be updated. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I can show it with a Z table. So what is undefined in there? Next to row, column and row? Um, if you're not able to identify what table uh, you would want to uh, basically use, then uh, you can make it ident uh, undefined initially, but uh, at the end, uh, say um, I would want to, uh, whenever I create a table, right? So that time you don't know what kind of data is being stored. So that time you can make it undefined. But at the end of process, you will have to either shift between column store or row store. Um, otherwise, you will get uh, ATC error uh, against this table that it is not defined properly. Uh, with undefined, it will not give you an error as such. It will just give you a warning saying that um, either it should be a column store or a row store. But you can still go with undefined. By default, if it's HANA database, it will go for column store. Or if mm -hmm. you want to specifically say row store, then you have to specifically say row store. But then it will still work with undefined, right? It will still work with undefined, yes. Okay. How does it still react to undefined? See, see, here I actually created with a column store. Now I change it to undefined. Uh, but it says specify row or column store information. Now I cannot change it back to undefined. So I can shift between row and column store. But once I created a table with a row or column store, then I cannot basically move to undefined. But when I create a new table, I can go with undefined creation. And then later on, I can change it to whichever is required based on my requirement, column or does the system allow you to save the data when it's under undefined? No, I don't think it will allow you to save. Okay. This is only when you initially, when you create a, a database, then uh, see, this, this, this cannot be used for transparent tables. So we have to give column store or row store for this table instead. So when there is a pool table or cluster table being used, then you can use it as undefined. Okay. So so but, as you uh, said, right? Yeah. It so also gives column store is usually recommended. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, as I said. So okay, so we can uh, switch any time in between, you know, the cores or uh, between the row store and the column store in case even if the data is been stored uh, as uh, you know in rows. Uh, yes. In case, as he, as Dure asked the question, right, we can, uh, in, in between the course of the transaction, uh, when the data is already there in, in rows, we can switch uh, switch it to a co column storage, right? Yes, that's correct. You can switch. And uh, Avinash? Yeah. Hello? Does yeah, it affect yeah. the system? Uh, like if you switch from column to row or uh, row to column, uh, does it have any impact on the system processing? Um, no, uh, actually, uh, no, there is no uh, um, uh, change on the system processing assets. Only when the way it retrieves the data will change when we use, uh, when we change from a column to row. What was the T code you used for this? Because I couldn't see it in my system. Uh, SE11. SE11, okay. Data dictionary and the table. I go into open any table and click on technical settings. So under technical settings, we have this new tab called as DB specific properties. That I got it excellent. You also see the way it's getting stored, like what you explained in the PowerPoint, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, now for that, we need to have a specific authorization to actually log into the HANA database. Uh, 
I will okay. see if I can get that. Uh, I don't have access to another database of this system. Um, but uh, yes, you can see uh, the table actually in the HANA database, but the way it's stored, you cannot see as such. So you can open the same table in the HANA database, and uh, when you retrieve it, it will show only as column wise. Okay. But the way it's stored in the RAM or hard disk, that you cannot see. The schema you cannot see. Okay. So, what version of uh, HANA uh, database we are using? HANA version. HANA version is it? So, I, this is a HANA DB with this is a release. But I am not aware of what are the different versions of HANA DB that has been released. But I can tell you about uh, the different versions of S for HANA. Yeah, where do I where do we see that? Uh, uh, for S4 HANA, we have to go into this product version. Click on that uh, small icon there. It will open this. So you will have to find this uh, component called as S4 Core. Okay. S4 Core defines that it is a HANA, S4 HANA system. And the release next to it uh, is basically defines which version of S4 HANA. 100 is the first version, uh, which stands for 15.11. And 101 is the 16.10 version. 102 is 1709 and 103 is 1809. So, so have you are there any major changes, you know, when we look at all these versions? Uh, so, what are the new additions like in between 1510 and 1610? There are a lot of changes uh, because S4 HANA has been evolving day by day. So, there are a lot of changes that comes into uh, uh, place for each every released version. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, exactly what are the changes uh, that has come? Uh, we have to see the release notes that they have uh, provided for each uh, product. Uh, but uh, uh, as such, what we are going to cover uh, uh, will be common across all the versions because uh, the logistics uh, was one of the initial module which was uh, moved into uh, S4 uh, perspective. So starting from 1511, mm -hmm. um, Till uh, 1809, we have all the processes that we will be discussing available in the system. Uh, but on the Fiery app side, uh, we will uh, have uh, different or uh, 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 the apps uh, that has been released for different versions. Uh, so there are changes in the apps as well. So you, uh, so when we look into the Fiery apps, I will show you whether it is available for 1610 or 1709. That information is available in Fiery apps library. Yeah, Avinash, can you repeat the, the 1610 uh, and then 1709, right? Mapping to the release, can you repeat that numbers? I'm just noting down here. Okay, so the first version of SAP S4 HANA release was uh, S4 HANA 1511. So 2015, November was the first release that happened, so that, that number points to that. 11 is in a, a month and 15 is the year. 2015 November. Okay, so the number against this is 100. The release of S4 core, uh, S4 core is basically 100. Okay, and uh, the next release happened in S4 HANA 1610. Uh, S4 core is 101. S4 core, and I think this has patch level. One and or SP level one and two. Okay, then um, so this was released in October 2016. Then we have uh, S4 HANA 1709, which is 102. S4 core. Uh, S4 core uh, 102 and S4 S4 HANA 1809 is 103. So this is the mapping which is available. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
okay so uh, so today uh, since it's an introduction session we will end the session here and uh, tomorrow we will continue with uh, uh, rest of more topics on uh, s for ana itself directly we will jump into s for ana system and then we will see how does uh, uh, the system looks or what are the different topics on s for ana system as such so you just wanted to ask you one thing i mean all all this uh, presentation for the today the primary with the structure and all how much is it relevant from functional perspective i mean uh, uh, this is an introduction uh, this is a good to know feature of uh, hana database uh, but uh, functionally yes you need to know uh, hana as a database as well because when we write the uh, functional spec uh, when uh, relating to a particular table or relating to a specific requirement mm -hmm. then we need to know how to access these uh, database tables from the hana perspective and and write it so that is why i have just included this topic as part of uh, the introduction scenario okay and uh, just uh, another question on the fly uh, this uh, the about coding which normally you do if you have to do search or something like that so does it would it does it depend on the kind of database a particular table is being stored in whether it's a column store or it's a row store yes okay okay yes the select statement would change that's what i'm like besides this significant changes or just uh, that, that bit no the from the abap perspective it is only the select statement that you need to look after but again from s4 on a perspective there is a different architecture change So I will explain that when we look into S4 on our system. Okay. Thank you.